What's up, everyone? It is Wednesday, the 8th of August here, and it's actually my son's 11th birthday today. Can't believe it, 11 years ago. Anyways, today's topic is one of the most asked questions I get on my channel, which is how to promote your own music or how to promote your music yourself. And this is a really, really uh, involved question in some ways, yet it's actually a pretty easy question to, uh, to answer. But the, uh, the answer is, is uh, how you do it and how much effort you put in it is actually the most difficult thing. Uh, so I want to talk about kind of some general concepts for this. And uh, it's probably the most important topic that I will talk about on here, honestly. I, I, you know, these are the things that people want to know because let's face it, the days of people getting record deals and uh, having A&R people, uh, you know, map out who you're going to be produced by, you know, who's going to make your record, how much money they're going to spend on tour support, who you're going to go out and tour with, having an agent book those tours. Those days are pretty much long gone. It's very, very, uh, very, very rare that people get signed to major labels. And pretty much the people that get signed to major labels are people that are already successful. <laughs> Chef says, who's going to steal your money? Um, by the way, I have a, a discount on everything on my store, my Beato book, 20% off today. The code is RB808. That helps support my channel. That supports me. That's the only way I'm able to do this, actually, and make videos every day is to uh, is 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 to do this. Um, so, and and thank thank you for those of you that have supported. Also, you can become a member of the Beato Club, which is actually my version of Patreon, and um, you can find that on my website as well. Okay, so let's talk about some things. What is the first thing that you do? Well, you have to have a product to promote, right? At the same time that you have a product to promote, you need to be thinking of developing or carving out your niche, your niche, however, however you want to say it. Uh, and that is one of the most difficult things is, is actually how do you develop an original sound and how do you develop a sound that people are interested in? Well, it's no different than developing any type of social media platform. They're all done in the same way and honestly, using the same tools, okay? So uh, you have a product. Let's say you're a, you know, you might have some, you know, progressive metal band or you're an instrumental uh, solo pianist that's, uh, that, that uh, is a classical pianist that you went to Juilliard or something and you're trying to, to get your name out there. Or, you know, whatever it may be. Promotion is promotion. So there are different ways to promote yourself, some of which cost no money, some of which cost a lot of money. On the expensive side is finding a publicist. Now, a lot of people are like, well, what's a publicist do? Well, publicists, if you find a good one, have connections with people in the media that can get you media exposure. I know people that are music producers. Um, a couple of friends of mine that years ago, in the last 10 years or so, hired publicists. They hired publicists to get their name and articles written about them in magazines, even though they hadn't done anything really big, but they were incredibly good at promoting themselves. And by them getting their names in these things with talking about records that really hadn't done anything, they started getting more work, okay? Which meant that they could keep paying their publicist. I mean, a good publicist cost about $3,000 to $4,000 a month for a top level, sometimes $5,000 a month. For a top level publicist, somebody that a major label is gonna hire are gonna be about five grand a month probably. Um, they can be helpful on everything to getting you on some, you know, into rollingstone.com or getting you to, um, you know, into any, even having connections with, rate, with places like Spotify, for example, because all of these places 
to, uh, to get your music put out, like Spotify, for example, have particular gatekeepers that are gatekeepers for particular styles of music. There are people that, or a person that promotes the uh, metal on, uh, uh, you know, the cer certain channels that, that have metal on Spotify or that have country or they have bluegrass or they have rock or they have pop or that have hip hop. There are different people that do these things. There's a limited number of people though. And a publicist is typically going to have someone or might a good publicist is going to have connections to these people, at least to get your name in there and maybe get somebody to listen, listen to you because they, um, uh, because those gatekeepers are the ones that, uh, that, are making the decisions, frankly. Okay, it's 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 actually relatively it's a relatively small amount of people to do it. Hey, Peter, how are you? Um, just to let you know, I am reading the comments here. Uh, Peter and Peter, both of them. Um, okay, so you need to have a product. You need to have, let's say it's songs. Let's say you're in a you're in a group that has songs. Uh, you're you're you can be an instrumental fusion band that has songs, or you can be a pop artist that has songs. How you go about promoting it is going to be similar. Well, let's talk about some of the big platforms that are out there. Let's talk about YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and about their pluses and minuses. Okay. I'll talk about YouTube first since we're all on YouTube. So you guys are obviously used to being on YouTube. What are the advantages and disadvantages of YouTube? YouTube can be really daunting because there are so many people on YouTube as creators. A creator is simply somebody that um, that, that makes videos. Okay, that's when people, you hear that term put out there, creator, uh, that's what they mean. Somebody that, that makes videos. Um, so there's probably, I, I forget how many billions of, uh, of people are on YouTube. I mean, it's, it's an incredible amount of people. And, you know, I was, I was listening to, um, I think Casey Neistat was talking about, he just hit, hit 10 million subscribers on his channel. He's a huge YouTuber, if you don't know who he is. And he said that the first 10,000 subscribers are the hardest. That is really a benchmark there for, um, uh, uh, for a YouTuber to get to 10,000. It's extremely difficult. So if you're, if you're an artist and you have, a, you have songs, well, how do you actually get people to listen to them? Well, one of the advantages of being an artist, who being a songwriter that, let's say, has, has a record of songs that they're trying to get out there that has over me is that a song on YouTube can get played many times. I mean, somebody can, um, you know, if I like a song, I might listen to it a thousand times, you know? Probably not a thousand times. I might listen to it a hundred times on YouTube. Whereas you're pretty much only going to watch my videos once, maybe twice. If you didn't get the concept, maybe three times, okay? Um, so songs can get played many times and can rack up views which is a positive thing because views are what push, uh, uh, views are how you get paid on YouTube. There's a couple different um, ways that YouTube that go into the algorithm that decides how hard YouTube pushes you. The longer you stay on a channel, the more, um, the, the more YouTube wants to keep you in YouTube and the more that YouTube is going to push your channel. But the more views that you get is the more money that you make on YouTube. Okay. So if you have single songs, what do you do? You know what I mean? It's like, it's one thing to make videos on content, like the content that I'm presenting here about telling you how to, how to have a successful YouTube channel. Well, um, you basically have a couple ways of doing it. One way is making music videos, and the second way is making music videos. I mean, that's it pretty much, right? You, but you have a couple of different types of music videos. You can have a directed music video. You can have a live music video, right? That's a live performance. Or you can have a lyric video, okay? Now, in order to do these, in order to use any social media, you have to know how to make a video. Um, 
you have to, hold on one second here. Let's see here. There we go. I got rid of my first annoying comment there. Uh, you got to learn how to use either Final Cut Pro or Premiere. Those are pretty much your two different video platforms for making videos. So those take a while to learn how to play. And when I, yeah, Premiere is Adobe Premiere Pro, exactly, or Final Cut Pro. Those take a while to learn how to use. How do you get good at using them? By making videos a lot. That's how I got good at, at I'm not saying I'm a great video maker, but I can put together a video very quickly. Um, so I'd say probably your best thing is to actually have a directed video that you direct yourself uh, or hire one of your friends that's really creative to do it. Um, so I would say that, um, that a directed video is the best. A lyric video is probably the second best. In order to have a lyric video, you need to make a video with some type of, um, motion graphic, um, font, right? Something that actually has movement that, that goes with in time with the music. It's, it's tough to make these actually. You need to get help or else learn how to do them on your own. But pretty much all of this has to do with you doing it yourself, okay? Um, all right, so you're on YouTube, you make videos, you make behind the scenes footage, if you're an artist, if you're a hip hop band, whatever, you, whatever style of music you are, you have to create some type of a following and that goes beyond them just listening to your songs. It's not enough to do that. Um, and no, music videos are not dead, Chris. That's why artists make them for every single song, pretty much. Um, okay, so you've created your videos. Okay, let's talk about some other platforms or, or things that people ask me about on YouTube. People ask me, is it worth it to, to use promoted videos, meaning paying uh, for... for um, for the click-through ads that you see at the beginning of your, um, uh, you know, at the beginning of this video or whatever. You know, when you have a video that's on for five seconds, you click through it. I have friends that have gone on there and paid, okay, using Google AdWords. And they get, it's it's interesting. I had a good friend of mine go on there against my, um, my advice. He went on and he paid and did a promotion and he, all of a sudden he started getting videos with 20,000, 40,000 views and they get two or three likes and he get no subscribers, okay? Those videos are getting played because um, they're, the videos are getting played because he's paying for them but they're, but they're really not doing anything for him. So, um, so he, so, which actually looks worse because you have all these videos with no likes on them, no, you know, very few thumbs up uh, versus views and no comments on them and then no subscribers, okay? That's the thing. When you start any format like that, like YouTube, if you have no subscribers or very few subscribers, um, then people are not going to want to be the first person to comment. You always have to have a per first person to comment on uh, on your video, right? So, so that's the next thing, is to actually start developing content and promoting it yourself. Do not pay for it. Okay, same thing goes for Facebook. When I see people on Facebook, friends of mine that are musicians, and a lot of my friends are on Facebook, and they do everything through Facebook. And I'm always thinking, why do you do Facebook? It does nothing for you. Have you ever tried to search a Facebook video on Google? If you do it on your phone, it makes you sign in or use a CAPTCHA to get into, to get into Facebook. Google and Facebook do not work together. There is no search engine associated with Facebook, which is, um, uh, that is, related to, um, or I, let me put it this way, Google owns YouTube, which means that if you have a channel that has subscribers, then YouTube is pushing you out to other people to get them to discover your channel, okay? And obviously the more subscribers that you have, 
the more uh, and the more engagement you get, the more YouTube pushes you out to people. Okay. Um, so Facebook does not do that. And I've said this a million times on here. How many times have you put up a static post, meaning with just a picture on Facebook about a gig that you have? How many likes do you get on it? Three. Why? Because it goes out to no one. I'll give you an example. I have on my personal Facebook page, 5,000 friends, okay? And I have 55,000 followers. I also have a, an artist page that used to be my production page. And on that, I have 35,000, something like that, maybe 40,000 followers. Well, when I put out a static post, it gets five views. That's it. That's, it doesn't go out to anyone. And they've also uh, changed the algorithm where it's almost impossible to get a viral video. Okay, so I mean, I know some people that have gotten viral videos, um, but Facebook is really only a way to engage with people. If you already have a Facebook page, it's, I probably wouldn't delete it because it, because it's worth it to go on there occasionally, but to do ads on there is a complete waste of money. Anybody that I know that's done Facebook ads for their music has gotten virtually nothing out of it. You have to have an engaged audience on it. Okay. And once you're identified as a payer on Facebook, you're in a different algorithm and they, if you're not paying, they're not pushing. Okay, so you just, you just have to uh, you just have to realize that that that's a fact. Now, you you don't want to pay for promotion unless you're going through a publicist, and then you know you have to really think about paying for things for promoting your own music. Okay, uh, I'm getting to Bandcamp and CD Baby. There's there are um, uh, YouTube has Google promoting you. Yeah, so if you're doing well on YouTube, Google pushes you and Google has the biggest search engine. Okay. So that's probably your best bang for your time being spent. Okay. Um, you have Instagram. Now, Instagram is actually an excellent way to promote yourself as well. As well. Um, Instagram is, um, you can't develop it's, it's difficult to develop a following on, on Instagram. You have to keep posting all the time, constantly. You have to have the right hashtags that go with it. It's very sophisticated, and, and you have to know what kind of hashtags engage with people. There are certain rules of thumb, for example. You can look up your hashtags. If something has 5 million uh, uh, things associated with a hashtag, well, it's not... It's, pretty much not worth putting it on there because those things go by so fast, the chances of somebody stumbling on your, um, on your content is almost nothing. And Instagram can be used in conjunction with YouTube really well. Um, that is probably the, uh, that is a great combination between the two because Instagram, you can do very short posts, one minute, even though you can do Instagram videos now, but that's just kind of getting developed. Um, and you'll see people that are YouTubers uh, working on their Instagram a lot. A lot of my friends that are YouTubers are actively working their Instagram, okay? And bands, it's very big for, for artists. Instagram is incredibly um, important, okay? It's easy to do. You got to take engaging pictures and make engaging videos. But once again, video content is always gets the most engagement. It just does. Okay. Same thing on Facebook. If you put a, if you put a static image on Facebook, it goes nowhere. If you have a video, you have a chance of some people watching it. Facebook pushes video content. Everyone pushes, everyone pushes video content. Okay. Just like there's a hierarchy uh, on Facebook, for example, a share is the most important. You, then you have uh, uh, comments, you have likes. I mean, likes are the least important. A share, though, is the most important because you're sharing it with a community of people. So it has the chance of developing, uh, uh, to becoming a viral video through that. Although it's pretty much almost impossible to have a viral video on Facebook now. Um, somebody says, it's hard to put up links on Instagram. Okay, so on Instagram, if you have a link to put up, 
you have to actually change your, the only place you can put a link is in the title, okay, is in your, you know, if you put in your website or something. A lot of times, if I'm going to put up something, like if I want to uh, do a discount on my, on something from my store, like I am today, RB808 is the discount code, 20% off anything. I'm telling you this, this is actually true. So if I want, was on Instagram now, I would actually put that under my name where it says Rick Beato one that's my Instagram handle because it's the only place you're allowed to do it. Now hashtags, what you, uh, the other thing about using hashtags, you don't want hashtags to clutter up your title, okay? Whatever your, your content is titled, go, go down, put a bunch of spaces, you can use dots or whatever, but you wanna separate your hashtags. A lot of people will go in in the first comment, as soon as you release the video, they'll go in and they'll paste their hashtags in as the first comment. But I found that it's better to put your hashtags in um, below where you see your titles. You just see the title and it looks clean. And then down a few rows are your hashtags so they don't get seen, okay? Um, so that is uh, that is a thing about Instagram. So Instagram is extremely important, which is you why you see most people, uh, artists are on Instagram. Most music artists are Instagram. They have Facebook pages, but there's just no engagement there. It's, it's uh, you know, it's ridiculous. Okay, your website, you've got to have a website that is developed. You have to have a website that makes people interact. Don't make people just interact with you through Bandcamp or through uh, you know through YouTube or or through Instagram, people you've got to draw people to your website. That's extremely important. Uh, having website traffic is the place. Websites are a place that you sell your your music, you sell your merch, whatever it may be. You know, I have a thing called the Beato Club, which is basically our version of Patreon that Aaron who uh, is my assistant who has a company that he started a, a teaching platform called Flat Five. And he developed a Patreon style thing that, that you can uh, uh, support artists. So if you wanna become a member of the Beato Club, you can do it there. I also sell merch on my, um, on my website. If you want a, you know, everything music t-shirt or I sell mugs mainly that, uh, that have all the formulas of all the modes of the major scale, melodic minor scale, harmonic minor scale, harmonic major scale, double harmonic major scale, and triads, right? It's got all the formulas on there. So when you're drinking your coffee, you can do that. Merch is, is another way that people make a living through music. Most YouTubers make their money not through views, but through, um, a big, big YouTubers make a lot of money through views, but most people make their money through merch. Next thing, obviously, besides having a website, is having a mailing list. Mailing lists can be developed, because this is a direct way to connect with people, is through their mailing list. They're worth a lot to people, to, to, to musicians. Mailing lists, lists you, can, um, you can engage with people through your mailing list. Uh, and it's really important. You can get people on your mailing list from your live gigs, okay? You, there are ways that you can have, there are apps and ways to share uh, uh, things through texting where you can get people to subscribe to your mailing list. You can get people to engage with your website from your live gigs, which brings me to live gigging. Live gigging is the most important thing for developing your own music, because that is your currency right there. That's the one thing that can't be stolen. That's the one original experience that people can have with you. Unless you're having this. This is the other original experience, is when I um, when I can interact with people on here, like Tony just said, how do you begin to make money as a composer? Uh, uh, this is live TV with interaction with people, you know? So, uh, this is another thing. Live streams are extremely important. And you can live stream on YouTube. You can live stream on Facebook. And you can live stream on, on um, Periscope. Which brings me to Twitter. Twitter is actually... Uh, Twitter is mainly used by people that follow politics, if I had to generalize. But many musicians use Twitter as well. And it's important to develop Twitter and to link all of your social media sources. I'll give you an example. When I release a video, it automatically goes to my Twitter feed, okay? And I don't have a lot of Twitter subscribers. Um, and I don't tweet 
that often. I tweet if it's something important, okay? When I release an Instagram post, it goes to my Twitter feed. So everything goes to Twitter. Twitter is important. There's a lot of trolls on Twitter, but Twitter is really important. And you can engage with people um, in the same way you can with Instagram, but it's more, uh, it's more direct. I'll give you an example of how you'd use Twitter. Twitter is, is let's, say you're, um, let's say you're an artist and you have a new video coming out. Well, you're going to release it at 3 o'clock on a Tuesday. Um, I'm going to go on Twitter at 2.55 and I'm going to tweet. Or I might go on Twitter in the morning and say, you know what, our new video is going to drop at 3 o'clock today, Eastern Time. Then I'm going to go on at noon. Our new video is dropping in three hours. It's a three-hour countdown. Then you go on at five minutes before and you tell people. Because you want to get that engagement right at the beginning of your release of your music. Okay? Um, so that is really, really important. Twitter is important. Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, I would say... Um, I would say probably Instagram and YouTube at the top. Then... Um, then Twitter, then Facebook in that order. Something like that. Um, there's Twitch. Now, Twitch is something that is really still developing for musicians, but will be a viable platform for music eventually. Uh, okay, let's talk about SoundCloud. Okay, I see SoundCloud on here, and I see Bandcamp. Now, SoundCloud and Bandcamp are great ways to get your music out there. Music now is free. You just have to, uh, just have to, um, that you just have to just deal with that. Music is free. Okay. Now these kind of places like SoundCloud and Bandcamp are, are ways that you can put your music out there, but they don't really do anything to promote your music. Okay. And, and the thing is Google, you have to have a search engine associated with it. And out of all these things I've talked about, Instagram has no search engine uh, associated with it. How do you find Instagram things through hashtags, which is not Google working for you. Google has the biggest database uh, out there, okay? And Google knows all these people on YouTube and will push your material out, uh, your, your content out to people that knows that clicks. If you have a klezmer band, and you look up, search a lot of Klezmer music on YouTube, then they're going to, you know, oh, he looks at a lot of Klezmer music. Okay, we're going to serve this up to them. Or you like shred guitar or you like shredding piano. Um, and Lucas just said, actually, Bandcamp has trending for, for genre tags. Yeah, but people do not interact with them in the same way. It's not like YouTube. Um, uh People discover my channel every day. Thousands of people subscribe to my channel every day. They do. Why? Because I make great videos? Well, I'd like to think so, but really it's because YouTube, because Google says, oh, if people like, uh, you know, you like things about the music business, for example. Oh, Rick Beato has a video on this. Or you like things about uh, music theory. Oh, Adam Neely. Oh, you should check out his channel. Or... You like jazz piano, Oscar Peterson, check out Amy Nolte. Or you, you, know, you like composition and, and really incredible piano playing, go to Nari Soul, her channel. And they serve up people's channels like that, right? Uh, I talked about Rick Graham in one of my videos. Rick Graham has 160, 70,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. He's a guitar player, great guitar player. If people see, if you're searching people like Ingve Malmsteen videos, boom, your sidebar, Rick Graham's going to come up because it knows what you're looking for. Just in the same way, just like Rhett Schull. If Rhett, if you're looking up, you know, uh, things like how to, uh, you know, whether my Les Paul Jr. that I want to buy that's a, a, a new one, how it compares to a... 59 Les Paul Jr. or whatever, Red did, Rhett just did a video about this recently that's really cool, where he, he says, is it worth spending the extra $20,000 on it? These are valuable things. So if you're looking up, hey, I'm, I want to hear what a Les Paul Jr. sounds like, you're going to see Rhett's video come up there in the sidebar, okay? This is why YouTube is, is actually superior to a lot of these. Um, subscribe to Rhett's channel and Nari's channel. Most of you probably subscribe to Adam's channel. 
and uh, and Amy's channel. Um, but you guys should definitely subscribe to to Nari uh, and uh, and Amy. And um, what about musical collaboration? Uh, so we just had a comment about that. Collaborations are extremely important, and they can be done through any medium. Uh, YouTube and uh, Instagram are great places to do to do collaborations. What is a collaboration? It's when you go in with a um, um, if you go in with somebody else that's established. Typically. Um, I'll give you an example. When I started my channel, I got I, I, um, uh, a friend of mine named, well, he's a friend of mine now, Dotan. Do, Dotan has a channel called Piano Around the World. He he wrote to me, he's like, I love your channel. I probably had 2,000 subscribers. I think you're, um, I think that your channel is going to be great. And, and I looked at his and he had 40,000 subscribers. I said, 40,000 subscribers, that's unbelievable. And then I asked him, I said, well, man, you get millions of views in your videos. How much, is, do you make money from this? That's always the question. He says, nah, it's not really that much money, really. Uh, you know, a, 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 a million views is worth about 1,200 bucks. I said, that's it? That's when I realized, well, you don't go on YouTube to make money through the views unless you're getting hundreds of millions of views. If you're Dan TDM, you're great if you're if you're doing if you're doing uh, you know five minute uh, what is it five minute crafts or something that my daughter Lennon watches all the time and you got 25 million subscribers then that's you can make money on it but you don't go to that um, you, you don't go into it for that reason uh, so I would say that, uh, that that collaborations are extremely important. And the people I've collaborated with on my channel, I've done all these sounding off videos. Uh, I had Steve Vai and Victor Wooten and Scott Henderson and um, and uh, uh, John Petrucci and and uh, Jordan Rudis and Gary Husband and Jeff Berlin and and uh, and then I had people like Adam Neely. I had Amy Nolte. I had uh, I've had many YouTubers, Rick Graham. I've I've had many YouTubers that I've interviewed on my channel, um, and those are collaborations. And I've done videos. I did a video with Adam Neely. I did a video. Uh, did I do a video with Amy? I think I did. I, I, actually, Amy. I've been on many videos with Amy in the past before we were on YouTube even. Uh, so collaborations are extremely important, and and it's great if you can collaborate with people that will. Um, that are you know willing to help promote your channel, and I remember when Adam mentioned my channel long before I knew who Adam was. But this is oh geez a year and a half ago. I didn't have I probably had forty thousand subscribers or something at the time. And Adam said if you want to um, check out a, a really great channel for music theory, you should check out Rick Beato. Boom, two thousand subscribers that day. That was unbelievable. I mean, I started getting comments in there. I'm here because of Adam Neely. I'm here because of Adam Neely. I'm here. I love Adam. If you don't know Adam, everybody on here knows Adam. Subscribe to Adam if you don't know Adam. But um, I, you know, I when I saw Nare Soul's channel, I started following her when she had about 900 subscribers. Okay, I had her in a video. She played. Uh, um, she, there she says. Rick included me in a video when I had less than a thousand subscribers. Uh, well, she also makes the most amazing videos too, so it's you know it's not not hard. Hey, Alan, um, and now Nari has seventy thousand subscribers. She makes amazingly great videos, and then we did a video together that you guys should watch. It's called "The Modes of the Darkest Scale Ever." It's one of my favorite videos, and uh, you guys should watch that. But that was one of our collaboration videos. Rhett Shull is on here. Rhett, you see in my videos all the time. I just did a video with him yesterday. I'm going to be putting it out, putting out. And Rhett helped me develop my channel. And I, you know, help Rhett however I can and tell people that they should, um, uh, that they should support his channel as well. You should support Nari's channel. You should support Rhett's channel. 
Amy always would, Amy Nolte would always push my channel to her subscribers when we first came on and the same thing. Um, and my Aunt Penny, I just saw that. Somebody says, where's Aunt Penny? Um, if, my, uh, if my Aunt Penny would start her own channel, she'd have a lot of subscribers. But it's all about collaboration. I mean, that's collaboration's incredibly important. Um, so, uh, then to distribute your music, okay? You have Spotify, you have Apple Music, but the avenues to get on those things that, uh, that people typically go through are CD Baby or TuneCore, okay? Um, and people ask me about those. I'll tell you some of the downsides of those, okay? CD Baby, for example, when they promote your music to YouTube, they put up generic pictures with your album cover and the name of the song, and you'll never get paid for those things. I would avoid that completely, personally, okay? This is my own personal, uh, this is my own personal opinion, but uh, I would not never do that. I would never never let them promote my music to any of these social media um, any of these social media platforms. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't use any of these social media platforms. Uh, I wouldn't use any of these platforms. I see distro uh, distro kid things like that. Um, you need to promote these things yourself and be in control of your content. Uh, who was I talking to recently? Um, I was talking to an artist that said, um, a buddy of mine, he's a, he's a jazz guitar player, and he says, um, he didn't even know that he released his music through, um, uh, yes, uh, Joe just said that DistroKid, DistroKid and CD Baby and TuneCore have, have an option to not distribute to YouTube. And I would always choose that. But I wouldn't distribute to any social media platform like that. I really wouldn't. Anything that you need to develop on your own. Those are metrics by having, if you have 100,000 followers on Instagram, okay, that is a lot of capital. That is a way that you can push your music and get it out there to a lot of people. If you have 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, that is a way to get it to a lot of people. Get your music out to a lot of people. Um, if you're if you're an artist and have 100,000 subscribers, you're probably going to have a lot more views than I am because my videos are typically single or maybe two view videos, right? Because um, because uh, because that's it. I mean, that's you know that's all. But with the, with songs, you um, with songs you can listen to them over and over. Um, uh, okay, then let's talk about indie label versus major label. I would say, forget about it. There's no reason to be on an indie label unless an indie label is, is going to get you, um, unless there's some reason to, that they, let's say they have artists that are of your genre of music or they have a stylistic component uh, like Matador used to have. Matador, uh, back in the 90s, back, you know, early 90s, Matador was the place where they had a lot of cachet. If you were a Matador artist, the guy that, that owned Matador that decide, decided what bands were on there, everything that Matador put out, I liked. So I knew if Matador had a, a record label, I liked it. I saw Creation Records, Sonic Vitriol just put Creation Records, same thing. If it was on Creation Records, Oasis, Swerve Driver, you name it. All the great British bands were on Creation Records. If you were on Sub Pop, same thing. There was used to be SST Records. It was a great indie label. IRS Records, Matthew said. Record la indie labels that had a sound. And they, ha they had people running them that actually cared about music um, and were inter and, uh and the guys that were running them, I'll give you another example, uh, um, ECM Records as a jazz label. If you're on ECM, chances are you're a highly accomplished jazz musician um, that, you know, you're, you're, one, you're a, a world-renowned jazz musician if you're on, um, if you're on ECM Records, okay? 
Um, so those indie labels are really important. Major labels I wouldn't even bother with. By the, I always say this, by the time you're, you're ready to be signed on a major label, you've got so much going on that it makes no difference. You don't even need to be on a major label, okay? Um, okay. There's other places that you can that you can um, you can be promoted through vlogs and through podcasts. Okay, um, you know there are massively big podcasts. For example, if you get on Joe Rogan, okay, he has a huge podcast that gets 90 million downloads a month. Well, who does he have on there? Musicians. Well, I recently, you know, I saw James Hetfield and Billy Billy Corgan on there. Okay. Those are probably not realistic for getting on Joe Rogan. By the time you're big enough to get on Joe Rogan, you're doing something right. Um, uh, Martin just asked, what about booking agents? So booking agents, um, here's where booking agents are good. Booking agents are good um, because they have relationships with, um, and they can package you with other with other artists, okay? They can use their leverage. Let's say I'm the... Um, Let's say I book John Mayer. Let's say I'm I'm with CAA and I book John Mayer, um, and I have some unknown artist that that I and I'm the same. I have the same agent, uh, and I have some unknown artist. I said, you know what? I'm going to let you have this John Mayer uh, tour here, but in order to do that, you need to book this so and so on this other tour. This other young young artist that I have uh, as a support. To get as uh, as a support gig for um, um, for some other uh, for, for another artist, those are really important. Having an agent is extremely important in getting support gigs. Now you can get a support gig just because you're somebody's favorite band, right? I produced three records of a band called Need to Breathe years ago, and um, we were making a record called The Reckoning. I think it was 2011, and while we were making a record. We were um, working up, uh, we, did part, we did half the record here, half the record of their studio in, in Charleston, and then we did a week up in Nashville. Well, we, while we were up at Nashville at this place called Blackbird Studios, uh, the band got a call and they, and they said, um, from their agent, and they said, Taylor Swift wants you to open for her on 82 dates. Okay, now, they're not like Taylor Swift. But they knew that, I didn't say they didn't like Taylor Swift. I said they're not like Taylor Swift. They just happened to be Taylor Swift's favorite band at the time. And she said, I want Need to Breathe. Okay? And, um, you know, Need to Breathe didn't have a current record out. We were making the record, but the record wasn't going to be out till the tour was over. But they went on and did the date, 82 dates with her. And it paid a lot of money. And they went on and they played seven songs, but each night, I think it was, maybe eight. But they played eight songs in front of <laughs> in front of 40,000 people. Okay? Uh, so, you know, and they went to, they made a lot of money and they, um, they be, you know, they were, and they were a decent sized band. We had already had a gold record, uh, the record before they made that. So it wasn't like they were some unknown band, but... It, you don't often get opportunities to go out and open for somebody that's playing arenas and stadiums, you know? So, um, Seneca boys, exactly, Monty. That's right. Um, so, so those are, th that's my suggestions for you right here. Um, people ask me about Reddit. Can Reddit be important? There's, there's Reddit music. There are ways to get your music and get people to engage uh, with your music on Reddit. Now there's a lot of trolls on Reddit too. Reddit's not for the for the faint of heart, but uh, your supporters can go to Reddit and um, and talk about your music, post your videos. If you guys ever want to post a video, I did a video on on uh, uh, what was my video yesterday? The Van Halen uh, effect. If any of you want to go on Reddit and go post my video in the um, uh, what is it? We are the music makers. It'll probably jump up in, um, and if you go, guys go and upvote it in there, those of you that have Reddit accounts, I bet it'll go from 50,000 views that I had since yesterday to 150,000 views in one day. 
That's, that's how powerful Reddit is. Reddit is a driver of YouTube. And that's one thing that you need to know. Daniel said, you need tough skin for Reddit. You do. But there's a lot of great people on there on Reddit too. There's a lot of people that know a lot. Um, so um, it's already on Guitar Net. There you go, Joe. Well, go upvote it there, everybody. And by the way, you can buy anything on my website. I'll do my own promotion here. 20% uh, off today, and the code is RB808. Think of the 808 kick. That supports my channel. That's why I'm able to get on here and make videos for you every day. And uh, if you become a member of the Beato Club, there's a lot of new content uh, that I'm putting out all the time on there. Uh, so you should go check it out. That's another way to support my channel. Um, I'm hoping to grow it big enough that I can really uh, start to do some things, do traveling uh, uh, for videos and things like that. Um, Mar Marcus X asks, is Bandcamp a good opportunity? Bandcamp, these things are all good opportunities if people listen to your music. You know, I mean, it's... it's uh, uh, but... The, what you want to do is you want to maximize it. And the only way to maximize it is to get someone else working for you. YouTube has Google that works for it. Reddit is another thing that pushes things on anywhere it is. Any, any type of video material, anything. Pe people can get promoted through Reddit. Uh, so uh, Chris asks, what about recording covers? If they're great recordings of covers, great, but you're not going to make any money on recording covers typically. And, and uh, you don't develop an original uh, following through recording covers. If you record covers, people aren't going to like your own music because I know that from my, I know people that, that, that uh, do, have done covers and they, that's all they are. When, people, when they do their own music, nobody cares. Always go out and do your own music. Okay, that's all I have to say on this. Um, you guys are the best. Remember, support uh, the Beato Club. When is my next master class? Next, uh, next year in January, in, uh, in July. I'll gladly come to Europe, though, anytime if someone wants to uh, organize a, a master class. Jacob, no, my question. Okay, Jacob, did you have a question? What was your question here? Let's see here. Did Jacob have a question that I missed or something? Let's see here. I can't see Jacob's question. Sorry. Um, RB808, 20% off anything. You guys are the best. Uh, we'll talk later. Thank you so much for watching.